Good morning and welcome to CFC Online Church. Hey, I just want to take a brief moment here before we kick off into uh, announcements and worship and all that and just uh, want to give you a little heads up. Make sure you have your Bibles handy this morning. We're going to be taking a look at uh, Psalm one, Psalms 120, 121, and 122. And uh, yes, I am aware that we have already looked at those in the previous weeks, but we're going to be doing it a little differently this morning. So make sure you have your Bibles handy this morning. Fellowship Church. We are so happy that you are with us today. Uh, just take this time to thank God for, for the technology that we have to be able to, to, to come to you in your homes where you're safe and to, to worship with you. Um, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and he is worthy of all the glory of all the honor and of all the praise. Hallelujah. 
again on high You opened the way For the world to live again Hallelujah But not only did he do those things, but he also took our, our sins with him. We have a direct communication with God through Jesus because he came and gave his life for us.
your hands, all you nations, and shout to God with cries of joy. How somehow, how awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. Amen. We need to not forget who is in control. Who has us in the palm of his hand? Yes. Who knows the beginning and the end? Who is going where he's coming from and coming from where he's going? Who knows all? Who? He is all. Psalm 66 also says to shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are you. Our deeds, so great is your power. If we can just rest in that knowledge, those things that we think are, or that we feel that are just taking over our lives and taking over our days and our thoughts, hmm. let your mind rest on the greatness of God and who he is. He is our all. We don't have to worry. We don't have to stress. He got us. If he knows what's happening to the birds in the air. He knows how many pieces of hair on our head. You think he, he's not thinking about you and not thinking about us? He, he loves us. Let's continue to praise God and thank him for who he is. Forgive 
Well, once again, good morning and welcome to CFC Online Church. As always, we are so very glad to have you with us this morning. And we are, uh, as I already said, we're going to be continuing in our Psalm series this morning. But with a twist, we are going to do something a little different here. We're going to try and uh, it might not work, so that's okay. But we, um, you know, we try new things from time to time. That helps to keep life interesting, right? Because right now life is pretty uh, dull, pretty boring. There's not too many interesting things going on, right? Uh, but what I want to do this morning uh, uh, is a online. Uh, I know. Online church of a prayer service. I, I want us to pray this morning, uh, and I realize that it might be a little weird. I'm not sure how this is going to go with being pre-recorded and all, but uh, let's let us just be adventurous. Let's do it. And you know, uh, you know, tech technology is great, and I'm thankful uh, for the opportunity to be able to gather together on. Zoom and things like that, and you know, be able to provide an online church experience. But uh, one of the things that you miss with the online setup, and you know, whether that's pre recorded or you know, we, we do live stream or whatever it is, whichever way it's done, what you miss is the ability to do something like a prayer service, um, uh, you know, and have a time of corporate prayer. You, you it's hard to do that, uh, in, in, um, online right in this in this thing so uh we're going to try it and uh if you're watching this live right live as it's premiering at 10 but starting at 10 30 on then uh if our timing is right you might just be praying with uh with those of us gathered in the parking lot this morning as well so maybe we can get our timing right and we can be hitting the same prayer points uh as, as we're doing it together uh, and you know that's kind of the best that we can do in these times, uh, you know. So sometimes, and uh, probably actually all the time, all you can really do is the best that you can do, and that's what all of us are doing during these strange and peculiar days that we find ourselves in. Just doing the best that we can, no matter what it is that you're doing, no matter what it is, uh, you know, the God has called you. Just to the best of your ability. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be your best. All you can do is all you can do. I don't know. Somebody needed that permission this morning. All right. Uh, so the structure of our of our praying is going to follow these first couple uh, psalms that, that we've already kind of talked about, uh, these songs of ascent. Um, you know, this, these Psalm, Psalm 120, Psalm 121, Psalm 122. And, you know, we're going to start here in Psalm 120, the very first song of ascent. And if you've been with us over the past few weeks, then you've heard me talk about uh, these psalms being the songs that the Jews who did not live in Jerusalem, they would sing them as they made their pilgrimage to Jerusalem during the feasts, you know, ex such as Pentecost and Tabernacles and Passover, especially. Uh, so Psalm 120 starts off with this Jewish pilgrim who is far away from Jerusalem. They're living in a, in a distant land. They are, are far from Jerusalem and, and the temple. Symbolically, they are, they are far from being at home, in the presence of the Lord. And there's this uh, allegorical sense for us as modern believers, you know, we can see these song, songs of a sense as relating to our spiritual journeys. You know, uh, every journey has a starting point. Uh, a journey has to begin somewhere, right? And in here we see that the journey begins in a distant land. Uh, woe to me! says the psalmist, that I dwell in Meshech, that I live among the tents of Kedar. In Psalm 120, verse 5, you know, every journey begins somewhere. And for each of us, whether uh, we grew up in the church or not, there was a time 
when we were in a distant land uh, of sorts and we had to come to a place of decision who uh, who or what were we going to serve uh who or what were we going to follow to dedicate our lives to uh, you know above everything else you know would it be ourselves our job our fill in the blank you name it uh, each of us had to make the decision to journey towards God, to put God above everything else, to make him the center of our lives, and, and to begin that journey towards him, to leave the distant land of ourselves and everything else and travel towards God and his presence. Or maybe, maybe you're watching this this morning or whenever and <clears throat> you haven't made that decision and I don't know you and I don't know what's going on in your life. And, you know, there could be a million different possibilities that could be going on in your life right now. And I, I will not presume to know what you're going through. But you're in a place and it's not great, maybe. It's a distant land. And in your heart, deep down in your heart, you're longing for home. For a sense of home, for, for this place of belonging. And friends, let me tell you, I've tried pretty much every way humanly possible to find home, that place of belonging here on this earth. Drugs, drinking, sex, porn, money, materials, popularity, things, you name it. None of them cut it. Not one of them, not one of them fulfills that need, that desire, that, that longing for home, that longing to belong. The only place you're going to find it is where this psalm wants to take us, to the very presence, to the very presence of God. That is home. That is what we're made for. To live in fullness with God who dwells fully with us. Notice verse 1 of Psalm 120. I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers me. So this morning, let us call upon the Lord. For we know this. We are assured and we have confidence that God answers when we call upon him. So here's what we're going to pray. For those who are far away from God, those of you who are in a distant land, let us pray that God would meet us as we take these first steps in this journey. For those of us on the journey already, let us pray that God would continually guide us and lead us as we make our way from the distant land and, and make our way closer and closer into the heart of his presence. Let us pray that God would continue to lead us, to guide us and reveal himself and his love, his love for us to us. Let us, let's pray now. And, uh, I'll give you a few moments here to pray where you are.
as we make our way to Psalm 121, we've begun our journey. And we're making our way up the holy hill to Jerusalem. And the psalmist here is making a, a wonderful declaration in this psalm, in this Psalm 121, that God is his helper. That God is seeing him through on this journey. Just as, just as we just prayed, we have in Psalm 121 the declaration that God does in fact meet us on our journey. As a matter of fact, he was there already waiting for us. Kind of like uh, Jesus, right? On, and the disciples who were on the, on the Emmaus Road. It, 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 sometimes it isn't until later that we realize God has been right there with us all along. Uh, sometimes in the thick of things, in the heat of things, and in, in the moment we don't realize it, we don't catch it, we aren't aware of it, we don't clue into it. But then we look back and we see God was there. God was always there. Uh, he was with us. He watched over us. He was leading us. He was guiding us. He was helping us. And, and even more specifically, which we see in this psalm, he was protecting us. You know, God is watching over us. He will not let your foot slip it says in 121 verse 3, He who watches over you will not slumber. God is always watching over us, always protecting, always there for us. Our second, our second prayer focus is this, that God would continue to watch over, help, and protect us. Not just us as individuals, but specifically us as his church, Christ Fellowship Church, but also the global church, the body of Christ in its entirety. These were corporate songs sung by a band of travelers, and this this is a corporate prayer exercise. So let us pray for us, as in CFC, and us, as in all Christians, in all places, and whatever they, it is that they may be facing. And let's pray with the attitude of verses 7 and 8 found in Psalm 121. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let us pray.
Thirdly, let us look at Psalm 122, uh, which was the focus of the sermon last week. And, and I want to just pull out one main idea from it, and that is peace. This psalm has a ready-made prayer for peace within it. And so, first, what I would like for us to do is to pray together, verses 6 through 9. We're going to pray them together, but there's a catch, and, and this is why I wanted you to have your Bibles with you this morning. We're going to read it as a prayer together. But instead of it being a prayer for Jerusalem, we're going to substitute church for Jerusalem. Ready? Let's uh, read slash pray together, starting in verse 6. Pray for the peace of the church. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Let us now take a few moments and seek the Lord with this on our hearts. Lastly, this morning, I would like for us to pray for peace within ourselves, within our communities, within our nation, 
and around the world. Within ourselves, because let's be honest, who couldn't use more peace? Uh, these are trying times for all of us between being locked up in our homes for many months to restrictions and the fatigue and the stress of what the pandemic has turned our lives into, not to mention the risk of getting sick or getting others sick, but being together. We, we, we've all suffered in some way because of it. And then add in riots and protests, add in racism and senseless deaths, finger pointing and, and division that is everywhere, the continual politicization of everything that could possibly be politicized, the 24-hour news media that is persistently sensational and in every way overdramatic, again, I ask, who couldn't use a little more peace? Peace of mind, peace in their spirit. So let us pray for peace within ourselves. Peace within our communities who are dealing with the same issues that we are. They need peace as well. Our, our increasingly divided nation, as a, as a nation, we need prayer for our leadership. God knows we need prayer for our earthly government. And peace in other countries as well. All around the world, the pandemic and its fallout is felt everywhere. All around the world, the ebbs and flows of our nation and the uh, are felt. The things that happen here have ripple effects in other places. So let us pray for peace.
God, you have heard our prayers. We have come before you at this time and we have lifted our voices to you because we believe what the psalmist says about you, that you answer us. So Lord, we call upon you. Hear the cries of our hearts. Hear our distress. Hear our plea. We look nowhere else for help but to you. The maker of heaven and earth, we look to you because you have made all things. If we were to look anywhere else but to you, we would simply and wrongly be looking to your handiwork, to a byproduct, not the producer, not the maker. Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us as we make our way to you. Lord, as we journey to you, that you would continue to watch over us, help us and protect us, both as individuals and as your body, as your church, your very special possession. Lord, we pray for peace and unity among your people. May May our love for each other be known throughout. May our unity be a light to those who are still in a distant land so that we might encourage and inspire them to journey along with us. And Lord, we pray for peace. Peace of mind, peace within our spirits. As we endure the trials before us, Lord, we ask that your peace would reign in our lives and that it would flow from us out into our families, our workplaces, our communities, throughout this nation and the world. Lord, we give it all to you because you are the one who answers and you are are the one that is promised to help. So Lord, maker of heaven and earth, we ask you this day, hear us and answer us. Help us, O Lord, we pray. Amen and amen.